Okay, we know the nine or hang or are in a massa den or corn and not in massa den or corn and ill at beginning short tonight in Talmud SS Sefirot. There's that Hashem who should finish tonight the introduction. I'd like to dedicate this short tonight. Lilun Shmata Rabba Gaon Adin Evan Yisrael Steinzelt, Zichon Sadik Div Rahalo Hadunat in Hanbegan Began Eden. Began Nefesh Harav Hagaon Yaakov Svi Ben Liba, Zichon Sadik Div Rahalo Hadunat in Hanbegan Eden. Begam Nefesh Harav Aaron Vulcan Zichon Sadik Div Rahalo Hadunat in Hanbegan Eden. Begam Nefesh Harav Yuda Ben Rivka Lea, Ruhadunat in Hanbegan Eden. The Gam Nefesh Avio Mori Vater to Rashi Svi Hirsch Memor de Hairu Hadonat in Hen Beganedem. The Gam Nefesh Hamio Mori Vater to Rashi Ali Isaac in Shayahu David Rohadonat in Hen Beganedem. The Gam Nefesh Haim Shmuel Yaakov and Ayalev. The Gam Nefesh David bin Yamin Ben Moshe Yaakov. The Gam Nefesh Shemaya Ben Adina. The Gam Nefesh Itzhak Ben Aliza. The Gam Nefesh Itzhak Ben Miriam. Ruhadonat in Hen Beganedem. The Gam Nefesh Hatun Hanabat Maza Miriam, the Gam Nefesh Ruth Bat Rachel, the Gam Nefesh Meira Bat Haim, the Gam Nefesh Zina Bashura, the Gam Nefesh Hana Rachel Bat Bunyamin Yehuda, the Gam Nefesh Rachel Bat Lea, the Gam Nefesh Rachel Bat Esther, Ruha Dunai Tenechen Began Eden. The Abdir Ben Amitim Lahaim Rufa Shema, for Eliyahu Ben Sara, for Shimon Moshe Ben Adina, for Yoshua Ben Moshe, for Haim Shuzam Ben Yehuda Ben Hinda Yochevet, for that to Zeb ben Lea, and for Moshe ben Bevai, El Narafana Lehem, El Narafana Lehem, El Narafana Lehem. Also, for Shema, for Masu bat Fortuna, for Esther Per bat Hana Devorah, for Chava Miriam bat Bunyareza, and for Chaya Miriam bat Esther. El Narafana Lehem, El Narafana Lehem, El Narafana Lehem. And also, for Shema, for all those people affected by the coronavirus or any other illnesses, may they have a complete and speedy recovery in the Schut of the Torah we're going to learn tonight. El Narafana Lehem, El Narafana Lehem, El Narafana Lehem. So we're in the end of the Hakdama, we're on page Lametet in Tamud Eses Sefirot, and we're in the second paragraph in the second column, the column on the left. Kof Mem Aleph. Ubazet Tavin Divrei Chazal Ala Katub. And with this you will understand the words of the rabbis on the Pasuk, which is in Yirmiyah chapter 16, verse number 11, where the Pasuk over there says, Say to them, because your fathers deserted me, declares Hashem, and followed other gods and served them and worshipped them, they deserted me and did not keep my instruction. So we see over here the Pasuk is pointing out to the fact that Oti Azvu Azavu Vetorati Shamaru. So what does this mean? Oti azab v'torati shamaru. Shepirusho, the rabbis explain. Halavai oti azavu v'torati shamaru. Halavai, God is saying that it would be better if they leave me. If they're going to leave anything, let them leave me, but not leave the Torah. Why? Hamaor sheba machazirin l'muta, machazirin l'muta. Because even if they leave me, but they still are learning in the Torah, the or, the light that's in the Torah, will return them back to the proper way. This is what it says in Masechet in the Yerushalmi, in Masechet Hagiga, in Perak Aleph, Halacha Zayin. Shilich Ora Tamua. And this is, of course, at the outset, is very, very strange. Omnam Kavaratam. What is their Kavara? Kihem ayu tzamim mitanim. Because they were fasting and they were and they were uh, they were suffering, limso gilui panavit barach to find the revelation of the of the face of Hashem, kmosh katav like it says in Yeshaya chapter fifty eight verse number two. Ve'oti yom yom yidroshun ve'dat deracha yehpasun keroy asher tzedaka asa u'mishpat Elohav lo azav yishaluni mishpete tzedek. Kervat Elohim Yehpatsun. To be sure, they seek me daily, eager to learn my ways, like a nation that does what is right, that is not abandoned the laws of, God, of its God. They ask me for the right way, they are eager for the nearness to, of Hashem. So we see over here, the Pasuk specifically points out that the Pasuk says, Kervat Elohim Yehpatsun, that their desire is to be close to Hashem. The Omer Lahem Hakatu Beshem Hashem, and it says in the name of Hashem, Shomer Lahem, that it says to them, Halavai Shetazvu Oti, it's better that you leave me. Me, 
because all of your efforts and all of your all of these efforts will be will be null and void. Because if you look for me any other place, you're not going to find me. The only place we can find Hashem is in the Torah. So as long as they leave all the other places and leave Hashem every place else, but they continue to look for Hashem in the Torah, they will find Hashem in the Torah. Therefore, they follow the they follow the Torah. They command to follow the Torah. Visham tikpasu oti, and there you shall look for me. Vam or shabaya hazirechem le mutav, and the light, the ore that is inside the Torah will return you back to the proper path. Vetim tsaunini, and you will find me. Kimuvuar, like it says in the Pasuk in Mishle, chapter 8, verse number 17. Ani ohavai ahav umishaharai yim tsaunini. Those who love me I love, and those who seek me will find me. We see the Pasu clearly says that if a person seeks Hashem, he will find them. And the only place to look for Hashem in the world is in the Torah. Kof Mem Bet, Ve'ata Now we can explain. Mahut Chochmat HaKabalah Be'efes Ma. What is the aspect of the Chochmah, the wisdom of the Kabbalah? What is its value? Be'ofan she speak le'musag ne'eman b'tiv hachochmahi that a person should be satisfied with this these items in the in the in the goodness of the wisdom of the chochma of the chochma of the kabbalah shalol hit otet asmo b'dimyonot kozvim but the first thing a person has to make himself that he doesn't make mistakes regarding false imagery she'ahamonim le'marbita medamim la'atzmam like the regular people imagine for themselves v'tzarich she'teda and a person has to know she'atorah kedoshah the holy torah is divided into four different aspects that basically surround or envelop all of reality three aspects basically are basically uh, are aspects of the reality of this world that are called olam, world, shana, years or time, nefesh, soul and the fourth aspect is derachai kiyumam shel otam gimel chelkei hametziut, which is basically dar amatzar derachai darche kiyumam, the way that they are established and they are given kiyum, they are given existence of the other three. So we have the three aspects of the reality, which is world, the time, which is place, time, and soul, world, olam, shana, and nefesh, and then what gives it the reality, which is the fourth chalek, which is the, what gives it the reality, gives it the mitziut, which is basically the hazana, the, the, the sustenance of those other three chalakim. Kof mem gimel, perush, explain. Ki achitzoniot shalem etziut k'mo ha-shamayim ve-arekiim ha-aras ha-yamim kedomeh. Because the outer aspect of the reality, the outer aspect of the world, is basically like the heavens and the, and the earth and the days and things like that. Ha-ketuvim ba-Torah kedushah, that are written in the Torah. We know the Torah is written in the Lashon of Adam. <coughs> And the Torah speaks about the Shamaim and the Rakia and the Aretz and the Yamim and things like that. Kol elu mechonim b'shem olam. And all of these things, these, these things are called olam, world. That pnimiu shalem and the inner aspect of the reality, the hainu ha'adam v'abehema, which was the inner aspect of the reality, which is man and beast, the achaya and wild animal, the of and the birds, leminehem ikdome, according to their, each one according to their species, hamuva'im ba Torah she yeshnam bimkumot hamas shenikran lechatsuniyot, that are brought in the Torah, in various places, which is again the chitzoniot, once again. These are called chitzoniot. Hem, next page, page mem. Mechunim b'shem nefesh. These things are called nefesh, which means each one of these living things, man, uh, wild animals, domesticated animals, the Torah calls them nefesh. And then the chain of the reality for all the generations, b'shem sibam suva misovev, which is basically cause and effect, cause and effect. Like the example he brings of the, the heads of all the generations, which means we have the ten generations between Adam and Noah, and then we have another ten generations between Noah and Abraham, and then six generations between Abraham and Yitzhak, Mitzrayim, and 
and Kabbalat Tatora Baharsinai, Meadam Marishon Ad Yoshua the Kalev Bayaret, until Yoshua and Kalev Bayaret, the ones who came into the land, Hamuvat Bat Torah, that are brought in the Torah, Shaav Nivchan Le Siba, the father is called the Siba, which is the cause, El Bino Hamisovev Al Yado. And the son is called the misoveb. The son is called the results or the effect of the father. And this aspect of the chain, of the detail of the reality of the world, which basically is cause and effect, that is spoken about, this is called in the name Shana, like we see, which means the, the, the years of the life, which means the years of the life, or the hishtal shalut, the continual, can you, the continuum of father to son to grandson, that is called Shana, that is called years. And all of the ways of the, 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 the forces that allow the existence to continue, whether it's the outer aspects that we discussed, which of course is the, which is the, um, which is the olam, or was the the other act, which is the nefesh, or the zman, moving Torah, and all of the different levush that is brought in the Torah, This is called the establishment of the reality of the world. Kof mem dalid and you shall know. The four worlds that are called in the wisdom of the Kabbalah, which of course are Atzilut, Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiyah, Ba'esh Din Shtal Shelu in the time, in the in the in the in the time when they were when they basically were emanated, Hine Yatsu Zemize. Each one it was came from the other one. Bivchinat Chotam and Echtam, like in the aspect of a Chotam, which is a signator and a signature. Kloma, that is to say, everything that is signed, everything that the signature person, the person who is signing is going to sign, is revealed in what is written, not less and not more. We discussed this a little bit in the concept when we discussed in Share Ora, where it talks about the, Zo, uh, the, the Sefer Yetzirah, that talks about the world was Sefer, Sofer and Sipur. Sefer is the book, that's of course the potential. The Sofer is the person who does the writing in the book, and the Sipur is the actual stories that are there. Ken This is how it was with the development of all the worlds. Be'ofan, in the aspect, Shekol da'ad ha'bechinot she'em olam, shana, nefesh, all the four aspects of the world, which are olam, world, shana, years, nefesh, soul, the kiyu mehem, and what gives them existence, shayu be'olam ha'atzilut. All of these were in the world of the atzilut. Yatsu kulam v'nechtemu v'nitgalu dugmatam. Each one emanated from the world of the atzilut and continued on and were signed or were sealed in each one of the in each one of the other examples. Gambe olam abriya in the world of the briya. The chen me olam abriya le olam yitzira. And similarly, they were formed when the olam abriya went to the olam yitzira. Ad olam asiya into the world of the asiya. So from here we understand that each one of these aspects are in all four of the olamot, and that's why as a person learns the kabbalah, there's a lot of things that they repeat themselves. Of course, with more details as a person gets closer to to the world, this world, which is the Olama Asiya. But nevertheless, the actual Klalim are the same regardless of which world a person is in. Be'ofan, shekol gimel ha'bechinot shem b'mitziyo shelafeno ha'mechunot olam shana nefesh. All these three aspects in the reality that is before us, which are called olam shana nefesh, which of course we have the physical aspects of this in the world of Asiyah, in kol darachia kiyum shalahem, and all of the ways that they are uh, given uh, reality, ha'aruchim le'enenu kam ba'olam hazeh, in this world that we can see, hinenim shechu v'nitgalu kam me'olam ha'yetzira. But they came to this world from the world of the yetzira. The yetzira min shalamala mimenu, and from the yetzira, from the world of the briah, which was above it. Which we understand that, that the source of all of the details, all of these details, the source of all these is in the world of the Atzilut, which is where the Briah came from. And not only that, the very aspects, the renewals, or the things that 
things that happen that we see in this world and the development that happens in Olam Hazeh, each chidush that happens in this world, there has to be an aspect of it that is revealed earlier in the, in the that is beforehand, that is revealed in the in the upper worlds, which of course begins with the Atzilut, then the Briyad, then the Yetzirah, and the Atzirah. Be'olam Atzilut, misham ba mishtarshev and nigla lana ba'amal hazeh. And from the Atzilut, it goes to the Briyad, Yetzirah, and then it comes to Olam hazeh, which is Olam Asiyah. Ve'zeh shikatuv chazal. And this is what the rabbis wrote. In the Chakol Esef Milamata, there is no grass that is below. Shen Alav Mazal Veshoter Milamala, that doesn't have upon it a Mazal, a constellation, a Shoter, a policeman, an enforcer Milamala. Shemake Alav Veomer Lo Gadel, that hits it and tells it to grow. Which means this is the, the, the dichotomy that exists where the Rambam talks about the Hashgacha Pratit, the Hashgacha Klalit. The Rambam says there's Hashgacha Pratit on human beings, but there's Hashgacha on the rest of the species of the world and things like that. And the Zohar seems to suggest otherwise, as we see over here, and this is not the Zohar, this is in the Midrash Rabban, Bereshit Rabbah, where it says there's nothing happens in the world, in this world, whether it's, in, uh, whether it's uh, human beings or whether it's uh, animal or, or plants, that is not caused to happen from above. So we, begin, so we see that there's a level of hashkacha pratit that is in everything in the world, unlike what the Rambam says. Then, and maybe they're speaking about two different aspects. I don't want to say the Rambam is not correct. He's speaking about something else. The Zesod, and this is the secret, En Adam no Kef Etz Milamata, and that's the sort of where it says a person, in Masechet Chulin, it says a person does not bump his etzba, his finger in this world, in, in this world, the lower world, until it's commanded for him, until it's announced for him in the upper worlds. And we have to understand this. And this is what the greatness of studying the Kabbalah, the more a person understands the pratim or the details or the klalim, shall we say, of the upper worlds, then he can understand the klalim of the lower worlds. And the other way is well correct. The more a person understands the pratim, the details of the lower worlds, this is how he can begin to understand better what's going on in the upper worlds. Kof mem hey. Veteda, and you shall know, you should know, Shebechinat hit labshut ha Torah begimel bechinot hamitziut olam shana venefesh. That the dressing of the Torah that we see in these three aspects of the reality, which is world, years, years, and nefesh, soul, the kiyumehem, and their and their cause for existence, Shebalam azeh ha chomrim kenemilamala, that are in this world, this material world, like we've said above. Hine, next paragraph, next uh, column, Mikanim Sanlano Ha Isur Vatumava Pasul. From here, the Torah talks about the concept of Isur, which is something that is forbidden, or Tum'ah, which is something that is not, uh, that is uh, Tameh, that is impure, or spiritually impure, and Pasul, and uh, something that is, uh, is, uh, past, uh, is past its time. And each one of these corresponds to a different one of levels. So the Olam corresponds to the Isur, the Nefesh corresponds to the Tum'ah, and the Zman corresponds to the Pasul. Shiba'im betorat aniglit, and this is what's this is what's the aspects of the revealed Torah. When a person studies Mishnah, Gemara, studies Halacha, this is exactly what he's dealing with: Isur, Tuman, Pasul, or Heter, Tahora, and Heter, and something that is permitted. And this is revealed to us how, because the, we understand that the Torah addresses Kav Yachol Hashem, and it's really all one. It says in the Zohar, Kuchab Rechu Oraita Chadu. It's one. Hashem and the Torah is really one. Ela Ba'olam Ve'ester Gadol. But in this world, the, the Hashem is hidden in the Torah. So the Torah is addressing, which is all the physicality of the Torah, which we learn the halachot from. But within the Torah is hidden Hashem, because Oraita ve kuchabrihu chadhu. Heyot ve alivushima chomrim ha'elu, that the fact that these material clothing, this dressing that the Torah is talking about, hema knafaim ha mechasim ha malamim otoit barach. These are the wings that basically cover and basically hide Hashem. 
Oman bechinat hitlabshupa to a Torah, but nevertheless, the aspect of the dressings of the Torah, bivchinat olam shana nefesh hazachim vekiumehem, with the aspects of these three aspects and what causes them to exist, shivigimal olamot ha'elyonim, that are in the upper three upper worlds, which is the atzilut bria and the asiya, shinikraim atzilut bria asiya, hema mechunim michlalam b'shem chokmat ha'kabala. So we understand that the nigle is the simple, the, 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 the pshat of the Torah as we read it with all the lavush, and the Kabbalah or the Nistar is to understand the deeper message that's within the Nigle, whether a person studying Chumash, whether a person studying Midrash, whether a person studying Halakha, whether a person studying Gemara Mishnah. That is the goal. Within the, the Nigle, the revealed, or the, shall we say, the lavush, a person has to look for the so that's inside. Kof mem vav, the ofa and shechuchmat ha kabbalah ve torah niglit, which understanding that the wisdom of the Torah, the Kabbalah, and the revealed Torah, hem hainuhach. This is exactly how it is. Ela be od she adam me kabel be bechilat tashkachal she hashtepanim. This is very important. When a person is still in the level of hashkacha, the providence of hester panim, we discussed this two weeks ago, that there are two levels of hester panim and two levels of gilui panim. So when the person is living in the hester panim, whether it's a Hester Echad or Hester Kaful, that Kadosh Baruch Hu Mistater Ba Torah, we understand Hashem hides Himself in the Torah, like we discussed earlier. Nivchan Sheosef Be Torah the Nigla. Of course, in that situation, the person is involving himself in the Torah of the Nigla, the revealed Torah, the Levush. Klomashe Nom Muchshal Kabel Shum Haaram Be Torah the Yitzira, because he has not yet been purified. He's not basically been uh, koshered enough that he can receive any type of emanation from the Torah. Torah of the Yetzirah. Of course, the Torah of the Yetzirah is the Nistar. The Yetzirah Lamar Od Milamal Yetzirah. Of course, you can't say, if he can't understand the Yetzirah, of course, he can't understand the Torah to Briah, and he can't understand the Torah to Avdatzilut. Ukshadam Zochel Legilui Panim Kanamala. When a person has the Zuchut, to be out of the hester panim. And that's why the most important thing for a person as he's studying the sod is the emunah, which means to recognize that everything comes from Hashem, because if a constitutional person, person thinks otherwise, that's the concept of hester panim or hester kaful. The gilui panim, of when a person recognizes that everything is coming from Hashem, this gilui panim, when a person has the zuchut to see that, az matchil la'asok bechokmat ha-kabbalah. This is a person that can begin to study the chokmat ha-kabbalah, or perhaps we can say that people have a cheshek who have a desire to study the sod, study the secrets of the Torah, it's because they're already appreciating the gilui panim. The people who can only appreciate the nista, the nigla, the revealed Torah, the people who only study the Gemara and the Mishnah and the Halakha and they don't study the sod, they are still in the concept of hester panim. Because basically the Torah is, the levushim of the Torah is revealed revealed in itself, and they became purified through it, and through looking in the deeper levels of the Torah, this is how he's able to acquire the Torah of the Yetzirah, that's called the Chokmah of the Kabbalah, and even the person who is Zoche to get to the level of Torah of the Atzilut, there's no change in the letters of the Torah. There's no difference in the in the in the in the um, levush of the Torah. Whether the person is discussing the Asiyah, the Yitzira, the Bria, or the Atzilut, But these very clothing of the revealed Torah, the clothing that's discussed, nizdakechulo, were purified for him, which means he understands the nimshal, which means kaviachol the entire Torah is a, an aspect of mashal. Of course, it's a pshat for the Torah as well. But we understand there's also a nimshal. And a person has to look at the messages of the Torah and understand the nimshal. This is a person that's getting to the sod. Atzmam shel Torah niglit. He looks to the, 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 the mashal of the Torah niglit and he understands the deeper meaning. And then it becomes purified for him. And then this levush is purified so that he can see the deeper meaning. And this is basically said in the pasuk. That you shall not have kanaf, which is like a corner 
od morecha, which means you're not just going to see the side, but you're going to actually be able to perceive your teacher, of course, the teacher being Hashem. And then, when a person is at that level, because there's three things that are the same, there's Hashem, there's Oraita, and then there's the Jewish people. These are the same. But which Jew, the Jew is able to see the Moreh, the Jew is able to see in the Levush of the Torah, the so that's underneath. Kof Mem Zayin. And so that we can begin to understand this a little bit better from a logical point of view. I'm going to give you an example, the rabbi says. Lemashal, here's the parable. When the person was still in the level of Hester Panim, it was clear that at that time the letters and all the dressing of the Torah were hiding Hashem. And that's why he failed, and that's why this person had zedonot, had purposeful deeds, or shkagot that he did. And then he was underneath the punishment, the level of punishment, God forbid. Which, of course, these are the levushim that are the gasim, the thickest ones, are the punishments and all the different difficulties that we see in the Torah. Shem tumav isur pasul kedumer, which is tumah and purity, isur forbidden, and Pasul, something that is profet is not allowed. Uchtumen, similar things like that. Omnam But when the person has the zechut to be able to appreciate the hashgacha gluya as opposed to the hester, ulvchinat teshuva me'ava, and he oh, and he gets to the level of teshuva me'ava, which is the. The, the earliest, which is the highest level of Teshuvah from the Yir'ah, but the first of the four levels, the Ava, Shezedonot Nasulo Kizuchuyot, that the purposeful deeds then become like Zichuyot, Harekola Zedonot Hashigagot Shinishal Bahem, all of the different uh, purposeful deeds and shkagot that he failed in, when he was in the hester panim, when he was hidden, when it was hidden, they basically shed their lavush, they said shed their clothing, their thick clothing and the bitter clothing. This is what he said before, that the person is able to see that everything is coming from Hashem. And even though things that look like they're bad, it's really the tov, Hashem is giving him tov, even though it doesn't appear that way, like the mashal of the guy who the guy uh, the who the king loved him and he went away and the bad guy gave him uh, t- uh, five uh, lashes and when the king came back he had five, he got 50,000 talents of silver and he wished he would have gotten more lashes which means this is the whole concept of the the difficulties this is when a person has gilui you recognize the difficulties of what's of course going to get him a closer gilui later on and then they were dressed in levush of or mitzvah and zechuyot. Ki otam levushim, because those very that very clothing. Next page, hagasim be'atzmam nitapichul lezechuyot, because these dressing, these things that appear to be punishment, actually was zechuyot. Ken mamalak, we said above. Ayen sham shehem ata bechinat levushim hanim shachim me'olam atzilut, because these are basically different types of levushim that are coming from the world of the atzilut or the briyash. Shehem anem nachnifim u'mechasim ala amore yitbarach, because they cut they. they when it's in the Asilut, it's not covering up, but what's in the Bria, there's a little bit more covering. And of course, in the Yetzirah, there's more covering, and then in the Asiya, there is the most covering. Ela Adraba, more so. Hayu Enecha Rotet Morecha, the person's eyes will be able to see his more, will be able to see his teacher. Kenomala. Haresh En Chasom Shum Chilusha Mashu. There's nothing changed, it's the same Torah. Ben Torah the Asilut, the Torah Shiba Olamazer, whether it's the Torah of the Asilut or the Torah Olamazer, the Hainu Ben Chokmat the Kavala Torah the Nigle, there's no difference. Difference between the two, it's the same material. Ela shekol ha'evchen who rak bivchinat adam osek b'torah. The only difference is the person who's osek in the Torah, the person who looks at the levush or he looks deeper than the levush. That's the person. The Torah is all levush, but the question is: Is he looking at the levush or is he looking at what's deeper? Ushnayim oskim b'torah behalacha achat, and two people are involved in the Torah in one halacha. Uvelshon achat mamash, and they're involved in one type of language. Vim kolze leachat tiyeh haTorah hi bivchinat chokmat hakabala b'torah. One of them is going to be able to see the deeper meaning inside the mitzvah, the deeper meaning inside the in this in the Torah, and he is in the level of Torah of Atzilut. And the second one is only going to look at the Lavush, is only going to see the Isen Isur and the Heter, and he's only involving himself in the Lavush, the Aven Zehetev, and understand that very, very deeply.
Okay, Kof Mem Chet. And from this you'll understand the righteousness of the words of the Gaon Mivilna, the Sidur Bibrikata Torah, in the Sidur of the Grau, in regarding the Bibrikata Torah, the blessings on the Torah, Shekatav, that he wrote over there, Shematchilin HaTorah Basod, that we begin the Torah in secret, meaning what? Things are hidden. That's the Peshat, or that's the, the, the apparently the Peshat. The Haino Torah Tanigle Asiya, which is the revealed Torah of the Nigle. It's revealed, but it's really hiding. What's it hiding? El Mistater. It's hiding Hashem. She Bechinat Nestar. This is Nistar. This is hidden. Because Hashem is completely hidden in the Olam Asiya or in the Levush of the Torah, that's the Torah to Asiyah. And then afterwards, when a person has a deeper understanding, he has Remez. The Remez, he has achieving the level of Torah Yetzira. That's like Rashi. Until he has the zuchut to understand the pshat. What is the pshat? The, the real pshat of the Torah is not the simple meaning that we see in the psukim, but the pshat is the deeper meaning. But the deeper meaning is from the pshat. Why is it called pshat? It's not called pshat to say simple. It's called pshat like a person who's removing the levush and is exposed. Nifsheta, it's been explained, it's been revealed. Because the goal, of course, is to get to Hashem, as we learned in that Pasuk, the hidden in the Torah is Hashem. And in the Torah to Asiyah, Hashem is completely hidden in the Isur and the Heter and the Onashim and things like that. And as the person studies more and looks deeply inside, he's able to see the Peshat. What is the Peshat? It's really Hashem is there. Continuing on, Kof Mem Ted, and it's removing all the clothing of the, the chitzoniot of the Torah. Kof Mem Ted, ve'acharei shebanu lekan. And now that we've come to this level, efshal eten ezem musag ve'evchan. We can give a, a, a level aspect, we give a level of understanding. V'dalad ha'olamot ha'nodayim bechofmat ha'kabalah. In the four different worlds that are known in this wisdom of the Kabbalah. Beshemot atzilut, atzilut b'riah yetzir asiyah. In the name shal ha'kidusha. That there are the names of atzilut, the emanation, b'riah, the creation, yetzirah, the formation, asiyah, the, the doing of the kedusha. And they're also, just like there are four worlds, these four worlds of the Kedusha, there's also a Bia of the Klipot, of the, of the husks, which is basically balanced one to the other. And each one is in balance. And understand all this. From what we said above, in the four different levels of understanding the Hashgacha of Hashem that we talked about, the two levels of Nista, the two levels of Nigle, and then the four levels of the two levels and the two levels first we're going to explain the four worlds of Abiyah of Kedusha we're going to start with the Asiya and go up Kof Nun we've explained above Dibur Matchil Vahineh Bet ha-bechinot ha-rishnot shel hashkacha, the two first levels of hashkacha, mevchinat hester panim, which is the two levels of hester. One is hester, the other one is hester kafu. Veteda shishnehem hem bechinat olam ha-asiyah. Both of them are in the aspect of olam ha-asiyah, in the world of the doing. Ki im ken ita besefer etz chayim, and that's what it says in sefer etz chayim, in shar mem ghe per gimel, asher olam ha-asiyah rubo ra, that the world of the asiyah is majority ra, mostly evil. Vegam oto ha-mute, Tov shigesh no bo, and even the small amount of tov that's in the world of the asiya, meorav gam ken yachadim ara. It's mixed with the rats, mixed with the evil. Bli lahakiro, and it's not easy to see it. That's the concept of the kafu, the hester kafu, which is causes completely ra. And then we have the person who only has one hester, which he's seeing from the back. He's not sure is it Hashem, is it not? His emunah is telling him it's Hashem. This is mostly ra, but there's a little bit of tov inside. Perush ki mitzad hester aichad. Vis a vis the first has there. Nimshach Shirubo Ra, the majority is Ra. The Hainu Hayisurim and Machuvim Shimikable Hashkacha Zot Margishim, which is the suffering and the and the trials and tribulations that these people are undergoing. 
Next, umitza de hester kaful, and based on the hester kaful, nimsa gam atov mitare bara, the good is mixed in with the evil. Then atov nikal gamre, and the good is not recognized at all, and that's the concept of hester kaful, like we discussed previously. The bechina harishna shel gilui panim, and the first level of gilui panim, he bechinat olama yetsira. This is the beginning aspect of olama yetsira. Vim ken ita beetzchayim, and that's why it says in etzchayim shar memchet peragimel sholama yetsira chetziot. That the world of Yetzirah, half is Tov and half is Ra, Kad Lashono. Now we understand what that means. The Hainu, Kmosh Katav Lael, like we wrote above, Shemasig HaBechina HaRishona Shel Gilui Panim, the person who achieves that first level of Gilui Panim, Shi Bechina Echad Shel Ahava Tluya Badavar, this is the first aspect Ahava that is Tluya Badavar, HaMechone Rak Tshuva Mira, that's called Tshuva Mira, He Nikra Benoni, this is a Benoni. What is a Benoni? Shehu Chetzio Chaya Vechetzio Zakai. He's half chayav and half zakai. So we see that balance. The bechina shniyah shel ahava, the second level of ahava, like we discussed above, she gam ken tluya badava. That is also tluya. That is the conditional love. El hashen shum zecha benehem mezek rarach kolshu. But he doesn't remember any of the bad stuff that happened. He made himself forget all the bad stuff that happened. The chen bechina gimel shel ahava, and also the third level of ahava, she bechina echad shel ahava she not tluya badava. This is the first aspect of uh, unconditional. Love. Both of them bechinat olam abriah. Both of them in the olam abriah. Vim ken ita beetz chayim, and that's why it says in in etz chayim uh, in shar mem chet peragimel she olam abriah who robotov miutura that the world of the briah is mostly good and there's a small aspect of ra there umiut hara enonikar but the small aspect of ra is not recognized is not noticeable dan k'mosh katev lael like we discussed above be pirush abrita and the pirush of the brighter shemitosha benoni zochel mitzvah chat that the benoni is able to acquire that one mitzvah of course that's the mitzvah of ahava. He only has 612, he doesn't have 613. Once he gets to 613, he gets the Ava. He forces himself to go to the Kav Zechut. And the, because it goes to the Kav Zechut, he's Rubotov, he's mostly good. That's the second level of Ava. And the small amount of Ra that's not recognized that is in the Briah is from the third level of Ava. That is unconditional. The gam kvar he chriat that's more the kav zuchut, and he already is machriat to himself the kav zuchut. Or nam adain lo he chriat alam kulo, but he did not cause the entire world to be machriat the kav zuchut. Shinim sam is there shem miu torah, and that's what it means that this small amount is raw because the rest of the world is not. He hasn't been machriat the rest of the world only himself. Ki adain en ava hazod b'mechnat nitzchiyut because then the love has not gotten to the point of everlastingness. K'mosh katuv sham like we wrote above. Omnam ena miut hazen nikar, but this miut is not really recognizable. Ki adain lo higi shum ra, because he still doesn't feel that there's any bad and there's no evil. The ezek afilu kalpe acherim, vis-a-vis others or himself, of course not himself, but even vis-a-vis others. U bechina dal shel ahava, and the fourth aspect of the ahava, which is of course enat luya b'davar, she pirusha ahava she enat luya b'davar, the gam he nitzchit, and this is nitzchit, this is everlasting, like we discussed above, he bechina to olam atzilut. This is the concept of the world of Atzilut. And this is what is written in Atzilut. And Shum Ra Koshu. In the world of Atzilut, there is no evil at all. The Sham saw the Pasuk, and there the, 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 the secret of the Pasuk. Lo Yigurachara. There is nothing, there is no evil going to be with you at all. Ki Achashi Echriat Gamet Olam Kulola Kapsukhut. Because now that he forced the entire world to be Kapsukhut, Hare Avan Nitzchit Mukhletet. Therefore, the world is Nitzchit and Mukhletet. That, and it and is established. And there will not be any more covering and there will not be any more anything hidden uh, forever because now he's got Nitzchiyut and he has the Avash and not Tluya Next page, Membet. Kisham makom giluya panim legamre, because there is the revelation of the face completely. Besoda pasuk velo yichanaf od morecha vayu anecha rotot morecha. And now he's going to be able to see his master, of course, see Hashem in that level of gilui panim. Kikvar yodea kol asakav shal kadosh baruchim abiriot, because now he understands all of the ways Hashem deals with all of the creatures of the world. Mivchinat hashgacha ha'amitit ha'mitgalem ishmo yitbarachatov metiv la'raim velatovim. And this is the ehayet. This is the concept. 
Davalat Hey Yud Hey, that he recognizes the Hashgacha, the true Hashgacha that is revealed from the name of Hashem, that is Tov and Metiv, La Ra'im Vela Tovim, to the evil ones and the good ones. Everybody gets Tov, even if they're ones who don't deserve it. Kof Nun Aleph. And from this you'll also understand, you'll also understand from here, the four worlds of Abiyah, the Klipa, that is vis-a-vis the Olam, the Abiyah, the Kedusha, vis-a-vis this, vis-a-vis this, Hashem did. Because the chariot of the Klipa, of the Asiyah, this is the concept of the Hester Panim in both its levels. Levels. That this Merkava, which is the Klipa, is ruling over. That's why this Hester Panim. So that the person will then think that everything is Kav Chova, and by doing that, he's going to deny Hashem, and that's the worst level. The Olam Yitzirah the Klipa, in the world of Yitzirah Klipa, Tofes Biadav et Kav Chova, it grabs in its hand the Kav Chova, Sheinan Mutuket et Ba'olam Yitzirah de Kedusha, that is not completely established in the world of the Yitzirah de Kedusha, because it's a Benoni, it's half and half. Ubaze Shotim ala Benonim, and they the rule on the Benonim, and the Kablim me Olam Yitzirah, they receive their sustenance from the Olam Yitzirah, the Olam Briad Klipa, in the world of the Briad Klipa, Yesh Bidehem Oto Koach, they still have a certain level of Koach, Kidele Vatelat Ava Tulia Badavar, but only vis a vis the Ava that is conditional, the Hainu Rakle Vatelat Ava Shibod Nitlit Ava, that since the love is conditional, the Klipa, if it's able to remove that condition, then the love falls apart. That's the only Achiza they have, the Hainu Abil Tish Lemot Me Ava Vichna Bet, which is basically the the, the, the imperfect Ahava, which is Tuluya Badava. Ve'olam ha'atzilut de'klipa, in the world ha'atzilut de'klipa, hu tof she'tofes bi'ado oto miyutara she'no nikar, he grabs a hold of the evil that is not nikar, that is not recognizable, she'esh ba'briyah, but this is nebriyah, because there is no ra'an ha'atzilut. Mikof be'china gimel shal ahava, vis-a-vis the the third aspect of the Ahava, which is Tuluya Bada, which is a not Tuluya Davar, but only for him, not vis-a-vis the entire world. Shafa Pishi Ahava Metiv, even though it's true Ahava, Mikoach HaTov Metiv Larim Tovim, from the Koach of Tov Metiv for the evil ones and for the good ones. Shehi Bechinat Asilut Kedusha, which is the Bechinat of Asilut Kedusha, this is the Eye, Im Koze Kevan Shelo Zachar Lachriya Be'ofen Zeh Gam Et Olam Kulo Lokav Zechut, but because he didn't establish that for the entire world, and was not Machriya, the entire world this power of the klipa that it has, that it can cause the ahava to be limited. Because the, because the klipa is still mashkiach on the ones that have not gotten to the condition, uh, unconditional love. Kof nun bet. And this is what's written at Sachaim. Asholam Atsilut Shal Klipot, the Atsilut of the Klipot, Omed Lumat Olam Abriyav, Lolomat Atsilut Ayen Sham. And that's what the Yat Sachaim is saying, that the, really the Olam uh, of the uh, of the Atsilut of the Klipa is not Leumat the Olam Atsilut Tekedusha, it's Leumat the Olam Akedusha of the Briya, not the Atsilut, because there is no Ra in the Atsilut, the Hainu of the Kedusha, of course. Because the Olam Atzilut of the Kedusha, Shemisham Nimshechad Rap Bekinat Dal Shalava, that there is only the last level of Ahava, which is unconditional, that caused him to be Machriya, the entire world of Kapsukut. Harashen Sham Shlita Lakipaka, there is no Shlita Vakilipa there at all. He Yachikvar He Chriat Kolam Lakapsukut, because he already caused the entire world to have Kapsukut. He's in the Nitzchiyut. The Odea Kola Sakav Shal Hashem Ikbarak Amba Ashkachato Ala Kolabriot, and he knows all of the dealings of Hashem, even. Even vis-a-vis everybody else, me'ashgachat shmo yitbarach hatov me'tiv la'arim la'tovim, the name of Hashem that is tov me'tiv la'arim ve'la'tovim, ela balam ha'briyah, but in the world of the briyah, shemisham nimshechet ha'bechina gimel, but only in the world of the briyah, we still have that third level, which is ava shinat lo'ya b'davar, but he was only able to machriya himself, but not the entire world, sh'adayin lo'ya chriya ta'olam kulo, they did not be machriya the entire world, ve'alken yesh od achiza l'kilbut, the klipot, there's still some achiza for the klipot, but not in the olam ha'atzilut. Ela sheklipot elu nivchanot la'atzilut ha'klipa. These are called atzilut of the klipa. The le'umat liyotam ne'umat bechina gimel because they're coming to the bechina the gimel. She'yavash she'enat lo b'davar. K'nemar like we discussed above. Ve'avaz zo hi bechina ta'atzilut because this level of avaz atzilut, but its achizah is only in the briah. 
Kof Nun Gimel. Benit Ba'aru Hetev. And we already explained clearly. Dalit Olamot Abiyah and the Kedusha. The four worlds of Abiyah and the Kedusha. Ve'aklipot she'em b'chinat ha'le'umat shel kol ha'olam ve'olam she'em b'em b'chinat ha'chik saron she'esh ba'olam she'negdog b'kedusha. And what is the Olam Aklipa? It's vis-a-vis the Olam Aklipa, all the levels of chisaron. So the greater the chisaron in the Kedusha, the greater is the Klipa. So since in the Olam Asiyah is the greatest Chisaron, therefore the Klipa has the greatest power there. Whereas since the Atzilut has no Chisaron, at least vis-a-vis the person themselves, vis- uh, therefore it doesn't have any Achizah there at all. V'shem shimukim da'alom abiyah shel Klipot. And this is the concept of alam alam olamot of the Klipa, which means there's Chisaron there. And the greater the Chisaron, the greater the Klipa. Kof nun dalet. These dvarim, these things that we're talking about here, is basically uh, is is should be satisfactory for anyone who has explored, anyone who has looked. And he should be able to appreciate based on this entire introduction that we've discussed so far. What is the value of the learning of the Kabbalah in the, in the, in the world? What is its value in the world? And it's worthwhile to know that the, most of the authors of the books of the Kabbalah they did not have Kavanah in their books vis-a-vis people who understand this, which means they're not written for the Hamon Ha'am. Because these, it's written for people who already achieved the level of Gilui Panim of Hashem and all the Hashkachot Elyonot and all the different levels of Hashkach that we discussed above. The endless all, and one should not ask, Im Kvar Zachula Hashsagot, if they've already achieved the level of Hasgah, Hasagah, Harehem Yodim Hakome Hasagatam Atzmam, they know everything based on their own Hasagah, Velama Lehem Odlil Mod Besivra Kabbalah, Chokmata Kabbalah Meachirim. So why do they have to learn the books of the Kabbalah for anyone else since they've already achieved the level of Hasagah on their own? Omnam Lo Mechokma Sheela Zot. This is not, uh, this is not a, a question of wisdom. Kized Domel Osek Patorani Gled. This is similar to a person who involved himself in the revealed Torah, then lo shumi yadiyabi iske He has no concept in this world, which means even though he's studying the laws of Chuli and he's studying the laws of Shechita, he doesn't know what the animal looks like that is getting the Shechita. B'chinat olam shana nefesh ba'olam azeh. And the b'chinat of olam shana nefesh in olam azeh, k'mosh katub le'el. They know yodem in mikreb b'nei adam ha'nagatam la'atzman. But he doesn't understand the ways of the world. He doesn't understand how the world works. The ha'nagatam imacherim and how they vis-a-vis other people. They know yodet ha'behemot. He doesn't know the animals. Ha'chayot he doesn't know the animals and the birds. How is he going to do shechita? Or any a person in order to understand the Torah has to understand the world how it works. It's going to come on your thoughts for one minute. That this person can understand anything in the Torah of the nigla, he can. He would mix things up. He doesn't understand it well. From evil to good and good to evil. He would not find his hands or his feet in anything. This is similar to the idea that we've discussed here. Even though the person has achieved a level of understanding, and even though he's achieved a level of understanding in the Torah, he only knows what's vis-a-vis his own nefesh. He doesn't know vis-a-vis the rest of the world. But he has to know all three aspects, which is olam, world, shana, years, and nefesh, soul. And not just his soul, all the souls, and all of their ways and all of their uh, all of their happenings, with clarity of understanding, so they can understand the words of the Torah that is connected to that aspect. That these worlds, uh, basically in all their details and all of their uh, aspects, these are explained in the Sefer of the Zohar and uh, and the Sefer, all the all the words of the Kabbalah, the true Kabbalah, the true works of the Kabbalah. That every Chacham that understands Stands from his dot. Every chacham that is mevim medato, anyone who's achieved the level of bina, has to be mehlehegot. He has to be studying these items yomam valayla, day and night. 
we understand here that uh, the, the focus has to be on the sowed, according to what he's saying here. Now, of course, a person has to know halakha, what to do. That's a given. But the person's majority of the time should be spent on the sowed when he's in this level that he's medi medato. And that's the whole concept of the bina. And that's why many of the rabbis have written, even though Rabbi Ashla didn't mention it, that a person should achieve this level when they're 40. Why? Because at the level of 40, it says in Pirkei Avot, that a man gets a level of bina. Once he gets a level of bina, it's michuya. He's required to study the sod because it's mevin davar mitoch dato. Continuing on, kof nun hey. Lefiza yesh lishol, and therefore we have to ask ourselves: Im ken lama ze chayivum mikubalim uchol ish lemod chokmat kabbalah? Why is it that the mikubalim required everybody to study kabbalah? We have to publicize this idea that he's going to talk about now. There's a sigula for all of those who involve themselves in the Kabbalah. Even though they don't really understand what they're learning. But through the cheshek, the desire and the ratzon and the will, that the powerful will that they have, that they want to understand what they learn, they basically rise up, it wakens up the, the lights, the emanations that are surrounding their souls. What does this mean? Perush. That every Jewish person is guaranteed at the end that he will achieve appropriate hasaga, appropriate understanding that Hashem wanted him to understand from the Bria, from the creation, so that people will have pleasure and benefit in anything that was created. But a person who did not have the zuchut to get to this level while he's in this Gilgul, he's scared to go back, so he'll have to come back a second time to achieve this level. Continuing on. Until he's able to achieve the level of Hana'a from the Torah that the person's supposed to get that Hashem wanted him to have. Like it's written in the Zohar. I was just about to say that. What's that? I was just about to say, I think this is a quote from the, from the Zohar. Absolutely. The Ben Ishchai brings like, that up as like, well. It was like deja vu. It was like deja vu. Baruch Hashem. As long as the person did not arrive at Shlemut in perfection, which he didn't get to Shlemut yet. So even though he, he, since he didn't get to Shlemut, he doesn't understand all of the Sod that he's learning. But even with that, what's happening is when he's studying the Sod, even though he's not understanding it, the or in the Shamaim, that Makif is Neshama, is shining. And what's happening, he's getting a place, getting a levels of that in this world. That it's already prepared for him, shall we say. And he's recognizing that it's prepared for him in the future. He doesn't understand. They're going to teach him upstairs. Correct. But he, but remember, there's another concept we learned. He doesn't mention it here. What does he say? When a person knows he's going to get something, it counts as if he already has it. Right? Yeah. So if a person has the emunah and knows that he's going to be able to achieve it, he already has it now. This is what he's saying right now in a, in a, in a hidden way. Ella shehema mehakim la'adam. They're waiting for the person. She's ked klea kabalashala. What's missing? The, the emunation is waiting for him. But his ability to receive it is not yet there yet because he's not shalem. So by getting shlemut, by getting the shlemut, he makes his kli kabalah greater so he's able to achieve and appreciate the emanation that's already there. There. And then what happens is these lights are able to be dressed up in the kelim that are kosher. And therefore, even in the time when his kelim are missing, he doesn't have the kelim yet because he's not shalem. Whenever he's involving himself in this Torah, in the Torah of the Sod, and he, re- and he mentions the names of the Oro, 
Hot and the Kalim, the lights and the utensils, Shiesh Lehem Mibchinat Nishmato Shayachot Elav, that his Neshama is connected to those various items. Hinehem Techech Merim Alav Beshur Misu Yam. They are immediately are lighting to his Neshama with a specific amount. Ela Shehem Merim Lo Bli Hitla Beshur Benimut Nishmato. But they're shining to him in a way that the out, the, the, the Pnimiut of his Neshama is not being dressed because the Kalim are defective. But the pnimiut is neshama is still benefiting. It's still getting that level. Only thing that's not happening is that the levush is not receiving it. Ka'amur. But the ha'ara, the emanation that he gets to his neshama, each time he does it, even if he's not understanding it completely. Mushachim alav chen. Where he gets chen, he gets benefit, he gets bl- uh, beneficence from Hashem, mimeramim from above, um mashbim bo shefa shel kedusha v'torah, and it influences him in a holy way and in a pure way. Shem and mekarvim et adam eod, and this brings a person closer, and this is how he sees the or inside the Torah, and he gets closer to Hashem, and that's how he repairs the kelim, and that's how he's able to get more emanation. Shagil the shlemut or that he achieves his shlemut. Kof nun vav. Just because. Just because he's trying, he's already building the, the kelim, he's breaking the clipboard, he's bringing the makifim, right? It's, but it's, even it's, if he's it's, not appreciating it yet, that's what he's saying. Even if he's not appreciating it, it's having a hashpa'a on his neshama more than any other aspect of the Torah. It's having a hashpa'a on his neshama, and it's bringing him closer to Hashem, which is going to achieve the ultimate result. Influence. That's my favorite word. Okay. I want to see if we can finish the introduction so we can start with the heavy stuff uh, next week, okay? Kof nun vav. Aval t'nai chamur yesh bet esik bechomazot. But there's a very important condition a person has to remember when he's involving himself in this esek. Shelo yagshimu hadvarim bitnyanim medumim vagashmim. But when he's studying it, he has to be very, very cautious not to think that the, the physicality that's being discussed in the Kabbalah is actually physical there. When a person does Hag Shema, Chas Shalom, when he's studying the Kabbalah, he's over in the Lo Ta'aseh in the Torah, which is Lo Ta'aseh Lecha Pesa Vechol Tmuna. Do not make yourself a graven image or any type of picture. Ki az, ki then, Ad Raba Mekabalim Hezek Bemakom To'elet. Then he causes more damage to himself than his benefit. And that's why this is the whole warning of the Kabbalah. This is the great danger. This is, this is, this is so the person doesn't think like, doesn't start thinking big of himself. And no. Doesn't create like. No. And so and the person doesn't it. understand when a person is studying the Kabbalah, there's a lot of words that are used. There's imagery that is used. He has to remember that oh. there's a nimshal. And he always has to remember the nimshal and not think the mashal is what is there. That's the danger. And he's going to talk about how he's going to achieve that uh, aspect in this book in, in, in a paragraph or two more. Continuing on. And that's why L'fichach, and therefore he's hero Zichonam Nebuchad, the rabbis warned us, that a person shouldn't learn these things until after the age of 40, when he appropriately had the level of bina. Or, if he's less than 40, he has to learn it from a teacher. And he has to be careful and very watchful. All this is because of what we discussed. Therefore, I prepared, with God's help, so this entire book is going to explain significant portion of the Etzachayim. First thing he has is what's called Panim Me'irot, which is faces of, of shining, and faces that are explaining of the Etzachayim. Continuing on. And I did this so that people, when, as we study these items, that they're going to be avoiding any type of Hagshama, any type of material attribu- attribution of material aspects that the concept we're talking about. After I published the four four halakim, 
four chalakim, the first four chalakim, there are 16 in this book, or 17. Uh, after I finished the first four, Nit Pashu Bekerv Halomdim, and then they were spread out amongst all the people who were studying. Raiti Bahem Shadain Lo Yatsati Echovat Biur Kmoshe Chashavti. I saw that still, nevertheless, I did not fulfill my obligation in being very, very cautious to be uh, make sure the students are not having any Hag Shama whatsoever. The Chol Hatir Chag Dola Shetarati Lever Achiv, and all of the effort, the great effort that I made to explain and to uh, to elucidate. That these things will be clarified without any difficulty. It was almost not helpful because if God forbid it's going to be Hag Shema, it's going to defeat the entire purpose. And that's because the people who were studying were not appreciating enough and feeling enough the tremendous obligation to be careful of every single word, the meaning of every single word that is coming, which means the word is a meaning, but there's the nimshal. This is what he can never forget. And to review it over a number of times. So first, to that person will remember by reviewing it over and over again. This is how a person remembers. As he reads on in the book, he can't forget Forget what he's learned before. Shemuvad Shamotamila. When the word comes again later on in the book, he can't forget what it meant from uh, from beforehand. And God forbid if a person forgets what the word means. Then whatever he's learning now is going to be messed up and all confusing. Because of the very sublime nature of the things that are being discussed. Even if he's missing the explanation of one word, he can, God forbid, lose the entire aspect in its entirety. Therefore, in order to fix this, I began to write a book called Perush Amilot, the explanation of the words, Al Seder Aleph Bet, based on the Aleph Bet, Al Kol Amilot Tamuva Pesira Kabbalah, on all the words that are brought in the Sefer, on all the books of the Kabbalah, Shetzrichot Perush, that need an explanation. From one aspect, I gathered all the perushim, all the explanations that are rizal, and other mikubalim arishonim, which is, of course, before the arizal, whatever they said about that very word. From the other aspect, I explained what a person is supposed to get from the perush, what a person is supposed to understand. And I gave certain levels. Levels of where that word means and how it means what it means. So therefore, the person who is looking will be able to understand this word everywhere it appears. Wherever he studies and sees this word anywhere in the Kabbalah, whether it's from the books of the Rishonim or the books of the Achronim. And I did this for all the words that are bring that are brought in the books of the Kabbalah. I already published with God's help. I began and I finished the, the letters, the words that begin with the letter Aleph, and a little bit from the letter Bet, and only from one aspect, and it's already almost a thousand pages. But because I didn't have enough money, he sucked the I stopped doing it because I didn't have enough money to continue doing this. It's already a year the rabbi is writing that I cannot continue to uh, to write this uh, this dictionary, shall we say, uh, moving on. And only Hashem knows if I'm going to be able to do this or I'm not going to be able to do this. Because the expenses are very, very high. And I have nobody to support me. And of course, in the small print, what does it say? from our suffering, from our difficulty. The, the book is left exactly the rabbi left it, which means it still only has only the Aleph and part of Bet, which means the rabbi was unable to finish it.
Next column. Lefichach, lakachti li ata derech acheret. And now the rabbi recognized he's not going to be able to write this dictionary, at least this is a year later, so he had to find another path in order to achieve that he's going to explain the words of the Etzah Chaim and the books of the Mekubalim, and yet avoid that, God forbid, the person who's studying to have any Hag Shama. By way of the word, tafasta mu'at tafasta. That you grab a little bit, then you grab. A, then you grab. Tafasta miraba lo tafasta. A person tries to grab too much, it doesn't, he doesn't get anything. But a person grabs a little bit, he grabs. So he, what he, he realized he was trying to grab too much. He, so therefore he grabs something smaller, and that was his goal. And this is the book that I'm writing right now, which is called Talmud Eses Firot Arizal for the Arizal. In this book, I'm going to bring from all the books of the Ari, and specifically from the book Etz HaChaim Shalom, all of the different uh, um, the essays, or the aspects are the essential ones that talk about the explanation of the SS Svirot. Shitzavti Otam Birosh Kodat, that I put them on top of every single page. On the top is the page that's it's talking about from the Arizal. And on that I did one explanation, one type of uh, uh, explanation, expansive explanation. Hanikra B'Shem Or Pnimi, and I called it Or Pnimi. Inner light. And then another explanation that I called it how to look at the inner, inner part of it. That explains every word and every aspect. And this is where he's going to achieve the, what he was unable to achieve with the dictionary. That was brought by the Arizal in the beginning of the page. In simple language, in simple words. As much as I could. And I divided the book into 16 different sections. Each chelak will be a specific lesson regarding one aspect of the Eses Svirot. That the Or Pnimi, which is that first perush, is going to explain the words of the Arizal. That is brought in that shiur. And the, the, the looking and deeper looking it's going to explain it in a more general way how it fits in in the scheme of things and he also made a table of questions and a table of answers on all the words and all of the, uh, the uh, items and that's brought in that chelek. After the person finishes that portion, that book, he should see if he can answer the questions that I've brought. Okay, and after he puts the answers down, then he should look at the answers. Vis-a-vis the question and to see if his answer was correct. To see if he really understood it according to the way it's supposed to be. And even if he truly understood how to answer the questions because he's got a phenomenal memory, he's able to remember what he just read. He should review the questions many, many times. Until it's like it's in the box, until he's got it really, really down pat. Because then he will remember the word when it comes up in the future. And if he doesn't remember the word, he'll remember where to look to find the word so he can find that word. He'll remind himself of what he forgot. And the, the will of Hashem it will be in his hands to be successful. Amen. Okay, well, a little more and then we'll stop, okay? Seder uh, Alimud. This is the Seder Alimud. This is the end of the introduction. So he's going to give the order how he recommends to study this aspect. And I think we're going to try to follow this order since it's foolish not to follow the order that the rabbi is telling us. Lamad Techila Tapanim. First, read the top part. Read all the top parts, which basically means the parts from the Etzah Chaim. Dehainu Divrei Arizal, the words of Arizal. Hamut Pasim Barashi Amudim Ad Sof HaSefer. That are the beginning of the pages until the end of the Chelek, until the end of the book. Ve'afa Pishelot Tavin. And even though you will not understand it. Chazor Alehem Kama Pa'amim. Review them a number of times. Al dat matchila lig migmar lehadar misbar. 
First, you have to read it. Then you have to explain it or understand it. But first, to get it understand, or to, to just to read it, be having understanding the flow. That is the first thing. Achareze, after you read the entire beginning part, which is the the, the headings, lamada tabiur or pnimi. Then learn the explanation of or pnimi. Vishtadelbo and make effort with it. So that you'll be able to understand the panim, you'll be able to understand the words of the Arizal. Even without the help of the Bi'ur. And after you've done that, then you should learn the explanation. Until you remember it and you, rem- and you know it all. And after that, and then you should go into the questions. And after you gave an answer to the question, look at the answer. That's vis-a-vis the question, the number for the question. And you should do this for every one of the questions. And learn it and repeat it and go over it again and again. Multiple times. Until you'll truly understand as it's written, as it's in the box. Because with every word, which is the third chelak, you have to remember everything that you learned in the first two chalakim. Not even one small iota, if you forget, you're going to miss something in the third chalak that's going to make the whole building fall apart. And what's worse than anything is, he won't even remember what that he forgot, which means he'll think, he won't even remember that the word that he's learning is, what, what he's understanding is wrong. Or that they will be confusing to him in his eyes. Or he's going to have an incorrect explanation of the item. Because he forgot. And there from what's going to happen. One mistake will then cause ten mistakes to happen afterwards. Until he doesn't understand anything he's reading. And then he's going to have to put down his hand. He's going to not be able to learn this limud at all. So that's the end of the introduction. So, wow. wow. So what we'll do is exactly what the rabbi said. Okay, I'm going to uh, send you some of the pictures. I mean, if you can buy the book, it'd be great. If not, that's okay too. I'm going to see if I can copy the next uh, couple of uh, pieces because we're going to go through the top portions just to just to read them and explain them as with the simple meaning. And then we'll go like the rabbi said. But I think it's very, very important that there's going to be the chazara. I'm not going to repeat over and over again what the rabbi said, because, you know, but, but this we have to do on our own time, shall we say. Okay? Mm-hmm. Any questions? Wow. Thank you very much. All right. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen. Have a good evening, Zohar.